Okay, so the intro and the verse kind of forms the majority of the thing. By the way, I'll just show you real quick. So I've got little bits of chords going on there that you use throughout the song. Um, you can see the tabs all neatly there and stuff. Uh, and I like to refer to that when I'm teaching the song because it means I can um, have a clear idea of what we're doing. So we start off by hitting the zero, uh, an, uh, like an E5, zero and two, okay? Then we're hitting the third fret twice, the down up. We're playing the second fret down so the picking's essential here down down up down that's an f sharp then we're hitting the fourth string and the fifth string open and there it's a d and an a I notice that when I'm listening closely, and honestly, I'm not 100% sure if it's the bass or the guitar. I think it's the guitar. But there's some ticking going on there. Like that. Tick, tick. But it's it's not a perfect tick, tick, and it's not a perfect little return back. There's a bit of gristle going on. Let's say even you just do this. That's too messy. That's not what we want. But let's say we, we mute a little bit as we're changing back to the E5. See, I'm just touching the strings. So if I do that really slow. Or I can drop the palm in. Okay, you might find that really difficult and frustrating. I would advise just doing this then. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, just a downstroke. What do I put on the tab there? Yeah, so. so you might just do one downstroke at the end. I'll just sit on the sixth string and then start again. Main thing is you've got these ingredients. And then start again. Okay, so I've spent a bit of time on that because it forms it's it's a huge part of the song. Like it's probably the thing you play the most throughout the song. Okay, so we go from that, even if you want to simplify it and, and don't worry about that extra strike at the end if, and go. Works fine. Okay, that's next. That is seven, seven, and seven. So right now, if we have a really quick look at what we're playing here, we've got an E5, and we're really riffing off the E, e minor. It's like an E minor type idea because G natural is the third of uh, the minor, the flat third of E. Okay, flat third means one. We move up one, two three frets, that's a flat third. So if I go a flat third from G, it's like that. You see that heaps in psychability. So we're using the flat third. If we move that up one, we'd be using the happy third, the major third. Like in a boogie. 
or something, but because we're using the flat third, it's a darker kind of sound, okay? Then, we play that F sharp, and we're hitting those open strings. It's kind of like we're doing a... It's kind of like some kind of F sharp chord, uh, F sharp minor chord, or it's like a D, inverted D. So if you're strumming on an acoustic with this song, you could go... It's kind of the same thing, okay? So it's really just a D chord mashed around, because when we play chords, we don't have to play them the way we've been taught by our you know, original guitar teacher, there's, there's a million different ways to play them. It's really about the notes that you're using. This F sharp, A and D, it's exactly the same as, well, there's an F sharp, there's an A, there's a D. Okay, so that's actually technically a D chord. I haven't really, I've listed that chord as a D5 slash A as it happens. So referring to those two. Okay, moving along, this chord here is actually a B minor chord. Um, oh, geez, what was that? Okay, I, I believe it's acting as a B minor chord. Sometimes it can be a little bit ambiguous, but we have a D, an F sharp, and a B. So that would be a B minor chord. So if we looked at that here, there's a, an F sharp, a D, and a B. Now we've got a D, an F sharp, and a B. Slightly different order, but still a B minor nonetheless. Okay, a little bit like if we played an E minor chord, like that. Okay, and then we moved it up. It's a B minor chord, okay? So seven, seven, seven on the third string, second string, and first string. And that's how he chooses to end that. Now, you can also grab the seven on the fourth string as well. That's the that's the, the flat seven of a B minor. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, in a major scale. But that seven, flatten it one. We're using the flat seven, okay? It is from a minor scale as well, but I don't want to get too into it. Okay? I just don't want to talk about it. All right, so um, moving along. Um, that takes us... We return back to this. And we hit that again. I nearly missed it that time. Now, I'm going to call this the chorus. You may disagree, but whatever, it's cool. It's the bit that goes up. So this is an A minor idea. We've got the fifth string, open A, second fret on the fourth string. We add our second finger. Okay. That's all there is to it, really. Um, the A and the E, it's just uh, um, part of an A, a chord, right? But we, we definitely know it's minor based when we're using that flat third. It's that same minor third movement or flat third movement. Because it was here. Too happy. It's not a happy song. Not really. Then we move up to the B version of this. So it's this is like... It's the same thing. We've moved the open up two and we've uh, adapted. Now, what I do here is I actually hold this B minor seven chord. And I start to open up that right hand as I'm strumming. So, so what am I holding? Two, four, two, three, two. But bar it. Put the third there, put the second there. Practice your bar chords like this. Make sure you've got every note. Crystal clear, okay? So we start nice and tight on the fifth and fourth, add the pinky on the on the fifth fret. And when I say fifth and fourth, I mean the fifth and fourth strings, the A and the D string. Okay, and then we sort of open up. So then we go up to C minor, we just move that chord C minor seven, we just move the chord up one fret. No fancy pinky stuff needed here. Just pick strum, pick strum, pick strum, pick strum. Move the whole chord up to D minor. Grab the Bixby if you've got one. Sounds good. Okay. Hit that chord and let it ring. Okay. Now, everything I just showed you repeats three times through. We've got three awesome verses telling a really cool story of rebellion and stuff like that. Great story. Do apologise, I never really wear shorts. You've probably got blinded by my legs. It's okay. Wear sunglasses for the next tutorial if it's a hot day, would be my advice. Not that you're going to know whether it's a hot day. Anyway, uh, moving right along. Uh, 
we've got the solo is the next thing. Okay, so for the next, for the solo, we come back to this riff. Then, just hit the open strings. Easy, it's just basically an E minor chord. So I'm actually going to, I'm gonna hit the delay pedal. Let's talk about the delay settings here. Okay, one second. Okay, by the way, this is my little Supro. Love this thing, one knob, got an EQ anyway. Um, so look at how I've got my EQ set. Really works different with different guitars, so don't take it as gospel. Um, not using that pedal right now. I do have a little bit of reverb, it's only a subtle verb. That's a that's like a hundred dollar reverb pedal, which would be probably like fifty bucks in the US or I don't know, thirty or forty pounds. Really, really in the in the UK or something. Really cheap little pedal, fantastic, does the job. Now, this pedal is okay. Um, I'm going to do a tutorial at some point about delay pedals, and my honest favorite easy to use pedal is actually a Boss. It's actually the pedal in that sticker there, the Wazacraft DM. Three? I can't read that from here. Two. DM2W. Yeah, that's actually a great pedal. I'm going to do a video about that soon. This one here, uh, this is how I've got my settings. And it sh and the point is more about getting the... You know, this song, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I want that second, the, the echo, the repeat on the two. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, that's kind of how that's working. Um, you can see I've got the mix fairly high because it's a, the mix is in the middle. Time is on the left and that controls that. Okay, mix in the middle is, uh, is, is the strength of the repeat. Regen, uh, sometimes that might be listed as repeats. Or echo, it just depends. I think generally repeats. Um, that's fairly low. I don't want heaps. I, I want maybe one solid one, and then it to be to degrade quite quick. So the mix pedal, uh, the mix one is up fairly high, so it's strong. And time, I've I've actually just set that by feel. Like I couldn't give you a number or anything. I just mucked around with it till I found the sweet spot. It's almost perfect. I'm pretty happy with it. All these other controls on this, um, they're not engaged at the moment, so they're not actually doing anything. That's a modulation thing. The one on the top right is a true bypass option, which is not engaged, and it doesn't matter because the pedal's on. So hopefully that helps. Let's go back to uh, the other view and the continuation of the solo. Okay, so now that you've got your echo set, uh, which, I mean, I could have done it at the start, but we don't really use it at the start, so... Uh, I'd prefer to keep it off, have a little bit of reverb for that little bit of ambience, and at that this point, we then engage it. So, um, you know what, I keep hitting those notes, but they're open, just like that. All right, so there's a bit of a count there. It's one, two, three, four, 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 okay? That's the first part of the solo. Next part, slide into the five, pick up on the first string, play the fourth fret, pick up on the first string, play the third fret with the first finger, pick up, down, up on the first string, okay? So it's just alternating, and then up, down, up at the end. With a slight start. All right, it sounds really good with the echo too. This it sounds like there's more going on than there actually is. Okay. Should give you a close up of this hand because it looks like it might be a little hard to see there. <laughs> okay, check it out. So that's all on the it ends all on the first string. And make sure down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay. 
not to get all, you know, high and mighty and get on a high horse, but I don't understand why musicians who play in bands uh, and, and take it real seriously, um, I, I, I see so much down picking. Guys, it's hard work. You're making it hard for yourself. Practice this whole down up thing. You're gonna be a better player, okay? I, I guess it's, I don't have a problem with it. It's, it's just, it's a shame because I feel like you're working harder than you need to. You know, um, playing punk or psychobilly or anything like that, there's no reason you can't be as awesome a player as possible, you know? Um, so work on these things uh, with alternate picking. Don't be slack, do it. Um, and you'll benefit for it. Even if it means you can play simple solos if you want, but you won't have to work as hard, okay? Um, and it give, gives you a better sense of rhythm as well. Now, off the high horse. Um, the So after we've done two bars of that, we do five, four, five, four. Okay, so we same thing, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up but we fill out the whole bar. Okay. And then we do the, the, the first bar again, the same version, so. Okay, so bars one and two are the same. Bar three is. And then we do bar four, same as bar one. Okay, so we do that once through. Then we start again. Now this is a little tricky. Let's say this is a uh, bar one. I'll count you through the bars. One, two, three. Four. One. Two. All right, so when I said two, that was like, we kind of started again. We'd gone back to this. You could also have called it bar five. Okay, so I've just gone four bars and then started on the count as one again. We get to bar two, two. But the last upstroke, we don't do on the first string. We actually start this lick. Okay, so we go. Okay, now you get to do an up here, then you can do another up again. Okay, then we do it, that's on the first string open. Now we play the third fret of the second string with a down. Second fret, uh, sorry, second string open, so that's a B. Um, then we play the third fret on the third string, it's a B flat. Then we play open, third string, which is a G. Then we play second fret, which is an A. Then we play open third string, all the while alternating. Then we play the second fret on the fourth string, then open third, then second fret on the fourth string again, then open third again. Okay, so that lick. Uh, sorry. Practice it really slow till someone could wake you up at 4 a.m. and make you play and you could do it without thinking and then speed it up. That's how you do it, okay? It's the only, only way. All right, so the whole solo, I'm gonna play it for you from that part, nice and slow. One, two, three, four. Again, the tab would make this a lot easier. Two bucks a month, five bucks a month. Um, I think it's Australian too, so you, if you guys might not even have to pay as much, I'm not sure how that works. But anyway, um, you can have the tab, that's what I'm saying. Last part of the solo. Seventh fret on the fourth string, that's an A. Flatten your finger on these two. That's the fifth fret, so one, two, three. Uh, let me count that, 
there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two bars of that. That's just an A minor chord. A, <coughs> excuse me. A, C, and E. A minor. Because the key of A major has a C sharp. We're using the minor third. A minor. Okay, A minor chord. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Same theory and everything. We just move it up two frets. It's now a B minor. Slide up one more. We've got C minor. Slide it up two more. We've got D minor. And he finishes with that slightly different emphasis. Okay, I'll play that again. So we're always just flattening the first finger on the third and second string. Okay. I know I was using my fingers there, but just use the pick, it's fine. Now I'm just relaxing that finger here so we don't get this. I don't like that. Relax it, okay? So you just, it's like you're just rocking backwards and forwards. But not too much, don't lift it off. We don't want this. No, just relax it without lifting it off. Then we do it again. Funky little little rhythm at the end there. Let's have a look at that. By the way, I am giving a little slide as I move up. Um, even if you don't, it's going to sound fine. If you want to slide up, as you hit it, pull the finger up. Still make sure you do an upstroke. Okay. Or you can do these all down, it's not that fast, I'll forgive you for that. Yeah, either's fine. It's only really when you're starting to get to a territory where your hand can't keep up with lots of downs, you should just be doing the upstrokes, but a lot of people don't don't work on that, and it's crazy. Maybe it's it's just a, you know, that's the whole point of a little bit of education. You, you might hear that and go, geez, I never thought of that. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, that little rhythm at the end. Okay, down, up, 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 down, down. So down, up, 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 down, down. Okay, and I'm relaxing my finger in there. Down, up, bring the hand down, but don't hit, and relax the finger. Two and three and four. One, two, three, four. Okay? One and two and three and four. Five. Okay, watch me do that. And if I do that strumming wrong, it's just awkward. Okay? It's okay if you can if you can execute it, it's not really a problem. You know, I'm all about the end result. If you're making that sound good and you're not losing time with the band, great. But if you can program in your strumming to be doing down on the beat and up off the beat, you create a constant sense, scent, sense of rhythm. Constant scent of rhythm. What's that? I don't know. Okay. One thing I've got to add to that. My apologies. The very last strum, okay, is uh, actually we add these. Look at me getting on high horses and then explaining something and it's not even right. Hey? So we'll go on. For the last strum, just put your your third finger down on the 12th fret and your pinky down on the 13th. Okay. Okay, just so you can see. Now, you're probably wondering why when I did my playthrough, I kind of just I went back to the main riff and then I sort of skipped to the end. I, I only I'm only teaching you the ingredients, you can cook it yourself because there's no new sections now, okay? It it goes back through another verse and chorus um, and then it ends. So for example... Okay, so there is one other section where you're... 
it uses that again, okay? So again, nothing new, just repeat. So at this point, you've actually got all the parts for the song. So if you go listen to the song, you'll recognize everything that's going on now towards the end. Uh, and you'll be able to finish the song. No new sections, um, except the very, very end. So. <laughs> That's it. So what's going on there? Sit on your E5, hit these two string, the sixth string and fifth string. Just go down up with palm muting. If you're having trouble palm muting, by the way, karate chop your bridge, roll over and play. If it's not palm muting, do it again, but karate chop closer to the pickup slightly, closer to the pickup, so that way. Karate chop slightly closer to the pickup. Now roll. Oh, now it's nice and tight. Hear that? Not tight. Nice and tight. So we, we do we do a palm mute and we we just strum down and up on the sixth and fifth string. Um, I should warn you, get ready for an E minor because he ends up going into E minor. So if we're here, I kind of sneakily roll into an E minor there. You're probably better off sitting setting up with an E minor, okay? So So what I'm doing, I'm getting the strumming's getting bigger. I'm starting to hit the third string. Then I'm starting to lift my hand. Well, not away from the strings obviously, but just take the palm mute off. Is that not the greatest sound you'll pretty much ever hear? Is a Gretsch hollow body doing a big E minor. No offense, solid body. It's mostly solid body. Oh my god, that is such a good sound. Um, yeah, okay. Let's summarize because I have a need for closure. Okay, well, that was really good fun. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, I'm just, all the usual things. Please subscribe. If you're not a member of Patreon, please consider joining. Um, it obviously motivates me. Uh, and rewards me for my time, which is considerable. It takes quite a while to, to have these songs and make these videos. Um, at least three hours goes into every single one, and that's definitely not an exaggeration. It's probably more. Um, yeah, but really great song. Of course, if you're having any questions or you're working through it or having trouble with anything, put comments in. As I get more feedback, I'll know how to do things better. Um, but for the most part, it's great fun, and I just am really happy to get the reactions I'm getting and, and the feedback. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, Let's see what comes up next. Who knows? See you later.